Welcome to Turn the Page, the official podcast of the Syosset Public Library. This is Evelyn Hirschgutz, Reader Services Librarian from the Syasa Public Library. This is Turn the Page, and with us we have an author, Abby Waxman. And Abby and I have spoken in the past, and I looked it up, and we spoke in um, June of 2022, so almost two years ago, when her book, Adult Assembly Required, came out. So now I'm here to speak to her about Christy Comes Out of Her Shell, which is her newest book that comes out April 16th, 2024, and I've finished it and I enjoyed it immensely. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Abby and then we'll talk to her about her book. So Abby Waxman, the USA Today bestselling author, is a chocolate-loving, dog-loving woman who lives in Los Angeles and lies down as much as possible. She worked in advertising for many years, which is how she learned to write fiction. She has three daughters, three dogs, three cats, and one very patient ex-husband. So thank you so much for joining us, Abby. My pleasure, always. Okay, and Krista comes out of her shell. Yeah. Okay, my first question to you is, where did you come up with this crazy idea of Krista? <laughs> I, I don't know. She just she just popped into my head. I mean, I I um I am very interested by celebrity, not not celebrities like I don't really I don't care that much about celebrities individually but I'm interested in the way celebrity creates this sort of false intimacy between us and the people that we follow or the people that we're interested in like you feel like you know them but you don't know them at all and that interests me I'm always interested in the the difference between the inside and the outside of someone I think that's where novels actually lie is in that space um, between what you appear to be doing or appear to be thinking and what you're actually thinking or what you're actually saying to yourself on the inside. Celebrity is sort of that on steroids, right? Like we only ever see the outsides. We never really find out the insides, but we're voraciously hungry for details, mm -hmm. right? right? Like we really want to know what are they really like? And we have right. like pages in magazines, like they're just like us, you know, like celebrities shopping at the store, you know, celebrities, mm -hmm. but it's, but you never really know them. And so I was interested in writing about someone who didn't want to be a celebrity, but who became one just because of circumstance and someone who was a celebrity who then chose to leave it in the case of her father, who chose yeah. to walk away. So, um, and I decided to make them related to each other. And then I came up with this idea of, of someone coming back from the dead because it seemed both ridiculous and amusing. Yeah. And what about, okay, why don't you tell us what the book is about? And then I'll ask my next question. <laughs> okay. So the book is about uh, Krista, who is a marine biologist. And when the book opens, she's living on an island in the middle of the Indian Ocean doing her research. She researches violent, violet sea snails. Um, not violent sea snails. Sea snails. Those are very different. Um, but violet sea snails. And she's sort of quietly living her life. And her father was a TV naturalist another scientist, a sort of like a Bear Grylls or Crocodile Hunter, something like that, David Attenborough. And he had a TV show. And then he disappeared in a plane crash about 25 years before the book started when Krista was very small. And so she doesn't really have a relationship with him or doesn't really have memories of him. And her older sisters do and her mother, obviously, but for her, he's kind of a closed book anyway. And then at the beginning of the book, he suddenly reappears. And it turns out that he staged his death and has been hiding out for this whole time and has now decided to come back. And obviously the world just goes berserk, or at least America does, and, and wants to know all about it and where has he been and what has he been doing. And of course, so does his family. And so Krista is forced to come back to Los Angeles to where her mom and sisters are and try and deal with, you know, all the fallout that ensues. And in the course of it becomes, you know, somewhat infamous herself and has to deal with that. So, yeah. And also there's a romance. Don't and there's a romance. Funny. Yeah, there is a romance. Very nice. A very lovely romance. I really liked him and her a lot. <laughs> it I'm glad. It was a good romance. So where did you come up with her being a bio marine biologist? Did you know anything about this? Did you, How much research did you have to do? Because there was a lot of information about it in there. Whether it was correct or not, I have no idea. Well, I did I a lot of research. Nothing about marine biology. <laughs> I did a lot of research and I actually... Uh, talk to some marine biologists and, and ask questions. And it there is a, a scientist 
called Celia Churchill, who actually wrote sort of the seminal paper on violet sea snails. And I was able to track her down and, and talk to her about it. Although she is not responsible for any errors that may have crept in. But um, and I'm just I'm very interested in, in natural science and animals in general. And so it was a pleasure, you know, to do the research. I often pick heroines who have activities that I'm just nosy about and interested in. So that as an excuse to do as much research as possible. Um, and the island that she was on, is that real or is that made up? It's a made-up island, but it's basically based on Reunion, which is a French island uh, near Madagascar. Uh, okay. And a friend of mine lives there. And, uh, you know, all the animals that I talk about and, and the things are all native to that island. So, Have you been there? No, I wish. It takes like 24 <laughs> hours to get there because you have to fly to Paris first and then from Paris to Reunion, which is, you know, on the east coast of Africa. It's oh, a wow. long, long, long way away. Much yeah, too long. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So you did have help with the research on that. I did. And I just did a lot of it myself because I'm interested in that kind of thing, you know, uh -huh. and yeah. So is Krista anything like you? No, Krista's far more um, cranky than I am. And, uh, you know, she sort of had a, a brush with celebrity in her teens. She sort of became famous for being a mess up and sort of like a Lindsay Lohan kind of mm -hmm. that kind of story. And was and ended up feeling very exposed and very vulnerable uh, in her mid-teens, which is the time of life when you already feel pretty exposed and vulnerable anyway, let alone um, now. And then and she sort of got got um, destroyed a little bit in social media. And social media was not something I had to deal with as a teen because right. I'm older. Um, so um, I find it fascinating that, you know, that there's so much power in in social media and so she has chosen to isolate herself away from everybody and I'm not like that I'm not such an isolationist although I enjoy my I spend most of my time alone and I enjoy it <laughs> well authors do I mean it's a it's a very singular job I mean you're by yourself just you and your computer I mean yep, yep it is and sometimes a cat or two but that's about it yeah. okay that's good so this is your one two three four five six book sixth book yeah yeah. And as I said to you before we started, I have read five out of the six. Mm -hmm. So I have to pick up other people's houses. That's the only one I haven't read yet. I've enjoyed every one of them immensely. You have a wonderful sense of humor. Thank you. I did laugh out loud a few times while reading this book. So I, I, I really enjoyed it. And the cover is adorable. I love the cover, the colors and the little crab on the bottom. I'm assuming yeah. that's a crab, right? I think it is a crab indeed. Yep, it's a crab. <laughs> Yep. It's very cute. It's a beautiful book. And just any of us, I ask at residents listening, it will be available on overdrive in both print and ebook form and in audiobook form. So, and the audiobook was very good. I was, I read and listen at the same time. Nice. And I enjoyed it. Um, there was a woman that read the book and then in the parts where you talked about media, where they, that was a male voice, which oh. it was very good. It really was very, very enjoyable. I have to say, I really loved it. And the romance was great. The characters are all fabulous. The twist, there were some twists and turns. Great, good. Yes, we like a twist in the turn. Yes, so that, I was surprised. I didn't expect it, good. but I was happy it was there. I'm like, oh, that's what she's doing. I get it. Okay, so I, I really enjoyed it. Um, You've got some pretty good reviews from the book too, I have to say. Thank uh, you. Kirkus so says, huh? So far, so good. Yeah. Yeah. I have Kirkus review. I have a book page, gave it a starred review. And it says Waxman displays her usual talent for creating main characters who are wry and great with a one liner. Krista is endearingly antisocial, and it's satisfying to watch her come out of her shell as she accepts the chaos of her family and learns to make peace with the past. Now, it comes out of her shell. Is that like a double entendre? Yeah, exactly. It was just a play on words. Yeah, yes. she does. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I hope people like it. It's um, it's just it's fun, you know, and and lighthearted as yes. as all of my books are. Yes, they are. It's definitely not, a not nice serious, not serious literature, right? <laughs> but... Which we all need now. Come on, I mean, since the pandemic and everything else that's going on in this world, we need something like that. We need books that we don't have to take too seriously. That nothing really bad happens it's all nice and nice that's what story. i love to write about people interesting people who aren't really super super mean i right. mean we have a couple we have a couple of mean characters in the book but they aren't you know hideous human beings they're right. just 
they're just flawed human beings right. um and they get their comeuppance so. mm -hmm. <laughs> that is the truth so that. that is true so how long does it take you to write a book uh, it take the first draft usually takes about six months, and then um, then I spend another four to six months going back and forth with the editor, doing rewrites and edits, changing it sometimes quite a lot. Um, so I'd say about a year in total. Okay, and your last book came out a year ago, or I think uh, no, I I, I oh, didn't. Have I a book spoke to you two almost two years ago with adult. I didn't have a book out last year in the during the pandemic. I I missed a year. Oh, okay. You're entitled. You're it's okay. Yeah, we all kind of missed each other. <laughs> we, we lost an entire year. <laughs> all, of, all of 2022 is kind of a blur. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, so I didn't have a book out last year. And then okay. um, this one comes out on the 16th. And then I have a my first mystery coming out next year. Oh, how nice. Wow. That's wonderful. Yeah. Can you give that, us a yeah. little hint on what that's about? Uh, it's called uh, One Death at a Time. It's uh, It's two female detectives, an old lady and a young lady. And neither one of them are ladies, actually, <laughs> an old woman and a young woman who are both kind of feisty and foul mouthed and um, sparky. And uh, yeah, one of them, uh, they're both alcoholics and one of them comes around to find a dead body in her swimming pool. And then it all sort of goes from there. But Does it yeah. take place here in the United States? It's in, it's in Los Angeles. Yeah. OK, most of your books are based there, correct? They're all based in Los Angeles. Yeah, different parts. The first five are all in Larchmont, which is the neighborhood I live in. This mm -hmm. Krista is set in Santa Monica and Venice on the far side of the city by the ocean. And then this one is up in the Hollywood Hills. Oh, OK. All right. And all over time. Yeah. Beautiful. Are you going to be touring for this book? A little bit, a little bit. And um, I'm going to Palm Beach um, and then I'm doing a lot of Zoom stuff and a lot mm -hmm. of sort of like this kind of thing, like podcast interviews, it's really gotten a lot easier to do publicity for a book um, because right. you can do so much over Zoom. So right. it's great like, to keep working and, and not get dressed and, and <laughs> <laughs> not have to worry about packing. And Exactly. It's my ideal. I'm right. basically still in my pajamas. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> it sounds like an ideal thing to do. What yeah, kind yeah. of authors do you like? What authors do you like to read and what books do you read? I'm a, able to read while you're writing. Does that? I cannot read my own genre while I'm writing, mm -hmm. uh, but I am a sort of golden age mystery fan. Like that is my sweet spot. Agatha Christie, Patricia Wentworth, Dorothy Sayers, um, you know, those kinds of Rex Stout, those writers. Um, and I read those over and over and over and over again. Like that's, that's, I've always got one or two of them going. And at the moment I'm on a bit of a science fiction kick, actually oh. reading a lot of John Scalzi who writes very funny science fiction. I've been enjoying him a lot. Um, uh, Corey, the guy who writes the Expanse series, I've been reading some of those as well. So yeah, I don't read um, sort of fictional romance or domestic fiction or whatever you want to call my genre mm. uh, while I'm writing because I'm always worried that I'm going to steal something right, um, or that. just become incredibly depressed because everyone is is so good. <laughs> you <know? laughs> um, well, so but, uh, are you. There's no yeah, reason well, to get depressed. You are very good also. And Kirk, I'm going to read what Kirkus even said. Readers who find comfort in Waxman's likable nerds will enjoy smart and snarky Krista. Krista's mother and sisters add delightful color and humor as they make clear where Krista's personality originated. And Krista's second chance at romance with an old family friend feels natural and genuine and full of heat. Is yeah. this the first time you wrote Heat or you've written yeah, it? Yeah, this is... This is the, the yeah. This is the first time I have an actual sort of sex scene. In, That's what in, I thought. After, as I was reading it, I'm like, I don't remember this in the other books. <laughs> uh, I was I was always a, like a fade to black kind of kind of person. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. I just felt like it. <laughs> okay. It was well done. I have to say, it definitely was well done, and Thank I you. was surprised. <laughs> That's what I go. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean. Yeah. It just, it felt right. It felt natural to the characters. It felt natural to the kind of, there's a lot of chemistry between them, a lot mm -hmm. of physical chemistry right from the get-go. And so it felt appropriate for, uh, but I'm not, it's not going to, I'm not going to turn into a kind of, you know. <laughs> it's not gonna, that's not going to, that's not the way you're headed. <laughs> I don't think that's the direction I want to go in. I think one, one good scene is enough. Okay. Now, now I'm going to write mysteries. So there will be no. No sex in those. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, I was surprised. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute. I don't remember any of that. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> it was good. Are you blushing? <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> luckily, my kids, luckily, my kids don't read my books. So otherwise, None of them? Waterfall. they don't know. They don't. I mean, they might because they're like, it sounds just like you talking. 
Oh, right? okay. So, you know, it's weird for them to the the well at least my eldest daughter is like I've tried but it's weird because it just sounds so much like you talking that it doesn't I can't lose myself in the book right I can't engage maybe with it. if she listened to the book and somebody else was reading it to her she yeah, might maybe. not be not hear your voice so much and hear the I narrator's voice I don't really care I mean it's, <laughs> if they don't want to I understand it's uh, my mother was a writer too so did you I, read her books I did but not until I was an adult oh so. okay so maybe she in a little... few years, they'll pick up your books. Yeah, exactly. Once I'm dead. They'll... Oh, no, don't say <laughs> that. Like, oh, look, there's mom. But yeah. yes, it's, um, yes, it doesn't really matter to me if they read them. I don't, there's no obligation. Okay. Do either one, any of them want to be authors? Do they, are they leaning in that direction at all? Um, I'm not sure. The youngest one is the only one who writes consistently. And so she might be the writer she, just because she does it. Right. It's not it's not so much wanting to write that denotes a writer. It's someone who just has to write, you know, and just writes for pleasure. So she's the only one that does that. The oldest one is actually an illustrator and she did the illustrations in the book. She oh, did the, nice. yeah, okay. the chapter oh. heading illustrations. I'm going to have her. to take a look at them again then, knowing that your daughter did them. That's so nice. Did she do the cover? No, the cover is someone that the publisher works okay. with. But um, all of the internal illustrations are her. Okay, very nice. That's beautiful. Well, that was a fun. It was a fun thing to oh, do. Yeah, to do. I see. At the head of every, at the beginning of every chapter, there's an animal. Exactly, and then it, that animal features somewhere in the chapter, in the like chapter. There'll be some kind of reference in the chapter to that particular right. animal. So. Okay, very nice. And I did, li like I said, I listened and I read, and the narrator was really good, also. So I highly recommend reading and listening to the book, whichever you prefer. But Indeed. I highly recommend. I really do. I, I really enjoyed it. It was really great. Great. I'm so glad. Yeah. So have you been, have you always wanted to be an author? Was that something that you always, I know you worked in advertising for a while. Yeah. Um, always yeah, writing all the time. I, yeah. I was always writing and it was just always what I knew I was going to do. And, um, because also because I grew up with my mother writing. And so I thought that's what grown ups did. You know, I thought that's what mothers did is that they had kids and started writing books and which is basically what I did. And I always wrote for a living. Like I was an advertising copywriter in my mm -hmm. career. Um, yeah, it's, it's what I do. It's just what I do when left to my own devices, I'll start writing. You know, if you leave me alone in a room long enough with a pad and a pencil, I'll start writing something. So, um, I feel extremely fortunate to be able to to get paid to do something that I happily did for many many years for free. You know, it's uh it's really very fortunate. So I'm very grateful for it. Wonderful, and thank you. I'm glad you do because I enjoy reading them immensely. So I appreciate. Oh, well, you are very welcome. <laughs> yeah. So okay, I don't know what else. I think that's really it. Unless you have okay. anything you'd like no. to tell us about your writing life. No, my writing life is going pretty well. I'm just finishing up edits on the mystery. I'm very, very excited about the mysteries because that's um, the genre I most love. The, the, I like to write myself the most. Is that so, what your mother wrote? Yeah, that's what my mother wrote. Paula Gosling. She was a wait. What was your mother's? What's your mother's name? Paula Gosling. Okay. And um, she wrote like sixteen books. And oh my gosh! And yeah, no, she's pretty successful and and enjoyed it. And that's what I grew up reading. You know, mm -hmm. was mysteries because that's what she had so many of and uh uh yes yeah, so I'm very excited about that that's um I'm hoping that people like them and that I can carry on just writing mysteries forever you know with these continuing characters because it's going to be a series oh how nice do you have so, a favorite uh, mystery writer besides your mother of course um that's to, I would say Rex Stout who wrote the Nero Wolf mysteries that's the one I come back to over and over and over again but you know Patricia Wentworth the Miss Silver mysteries I love those very much. Um, yeah, all of those classic golden age writers, Naya Marsh, Dorothy Sayers, like they're all wonderful, wonderful writers and the mysteries are really interesting. I, f I have discovered that mysteries are incredibly difficult and that having, um, you know, basically prayed for this opportunity my whole life, now that I have it, I'm like, oh my God, what was I thinking? Because mm -hmm. it's really hard. Right. And you have to, you really have to outline, right? For a you really have to outline, which I'm not, I'm much more of a pantser and I just right. make it up as I go along. And so right. that doesn't work with mysteries. So I'm having to really push myself hard. Um, but that's good. I mean, you, you've got to, you've got to go into new things, right? Try new stuff mm -hmm. all the time. Um, right. Yeah. So I've been trying to get my publisher to let me write a mystery for about five years. So it, uh, finally mysteries are having a moment, you know, mm -hmm. like they're back in fashion. 
And so um, I'm getting my chance and I hope that people like them. Oh. The, the detectives are called Mason and Man. And so the first one is out next year. Okay, we look forward to it. Absolutely. And we'll talk to you again when you put out yes. the mystery. Yes, is I there would... any current mystery writers that you like? I mean, there's so many um, out there now. There are so many. Um, I've been really, well, the um, Richard Osman, of course, okay. uh, you know, is fantastic. And my my books are somewhat similar to that in that they're funny. You okay, know, they're yeah. not, they are not noir. They are not serious crime. They are, you know, funny detective fiction. Okay. Um, so that is the, sort of the, the most similar sort okay. of. He has a I, new series coming out. I just read also. So oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. No, very, yeah. very prolific. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so we look forward to that, and we'll talk to you next year when the book comes out. That would be wonderful. I look forward to it. Okay, so we're going to close this chapter of Turn the Page. Thank you, Abby, so much for speaking with us. It's been my pleasure. As and we'll Thank talk you. to you soon. Take okay. care. It's time to close this chapter of Turn the Page. Join us for the next episode.